It says that you're recording. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh my gosh. Welcome to Inspire Conversations with Kim Evans. And this is our Black History Month edition. Welcome, where we talk health, wealth, business building, entrepreneurialism, and I'm bringing people at the top of the game. I'm so excited. I hope all of you have been able to enjoy our podcast thus far up until this month in celebration of Black History Month. So I decided to bring a beautiful young entrepreneur to the scene today, and I'm so excited to have this young talent that we're going to interview today. And her name is Miss Joyelle. So Miss Joyelle, before I welcome you to the show, I always love to open my podcast show in prayer. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're just going to just acknowledge and we're going to invite the Holy One in. I always love to invite God in. God, we just thank you today for acknowledging who you are, being the omnipotent one, the creator, the most powerful, the most high, the author, the finisher of our faith, the alpha and the omega. We just thank you, God, because we want you to be able to be invited in and to navigate this whole podcast because you know exactly where it's going to land. Miss Joyelle, we are so excited that, Lord, you have just blessed this young talent, blessed this young mind, blessed this young lady. And we pray, Lord, that she just becomes the best version of herself that you predestined for her to become and accelerate in everything that she touched and bless her mom. God, we just thank our podcast listeners for listening. Thank you very much. May this be inspired. May you be inspired. May your children be inspired. May the words that this young lady shared today and my words fall on undeath ears. May it go to the south and the north and the west and the east as far as the words may land. And God, thank you for giving me this voice because without you, I would have no voice. So Miss Joyelle, welcome to Inspired Conversations with Kim. Woo-hoo! Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Yeah. <laughs> so Miss Joyelle, you really don't have no bio. You haven't even been here on the face of the earth that long to have a bio. But for as long as you have been here, you have been doing a lot. So I'm going to share a little bit about you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Nine-year-old entrepreneur, highly academic. Your grades are amazing. Inspiring dancer, singer, owner of your own art company. Joel, you have your own art company? You have your own art company called The World of Joy, also known as The Real World of Joy. And we're going to get there a little bit about that. We're going to share the world, your art pieces that I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just honored. Joelle has a natural knack for everything. She's very creative. She's very technical. You all need to follow her on her YouTube channel. Awesome, awesome. She enjoys painting, coding, math, science, dancing, senior, drawing, and a much, much more. She dreams to be a Disney star, to own her own restaurant with her mother, become a millionaire, and a volunteer helping animals and supporting her community. Welcome, Miss mm-hmm. Joelle Nye Evans. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. I am so glad that you are here. Are you happy to be here today? Yeah. And you know you're live and we're celebrating Black History Month. So let me ask you real quick, what does Black History Month mean to you as a nine-year-old? What does that mean to you? It means that we could just celebrate being our Black selves, like different kinds of shades of brown. Mm-hmm. 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 And how is that? how does that make you feel? as a young girl that you can celebrate who you are with multiple shades of brown. It makes me feel happy because like they used to not even have like Black History Month, but now we get to celebrate uh, like our shades of brown and stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let me ask you real quickly, uh, Ms. Joyelle, what are three things you are grateful for? I am grateful for my mother. For actually, I like I used when I was like three or four, I used to always watch her paint, and then I would start to paint with her, and I felt really good about it. I also like to thank my dad because when I was visiting him to Los Angeles, he t- um he let me sell some artwork to his friends and his family, 
and I made that's the time that I made my first one hundred dollar bill. Oh my gosh! And how old were you when you made your first one hundred dollar bill? Like eight. That was last year. Yeah, I was either still eight. I think I was no, I was still nine. Yes, so well, that was this year. That's your first one hundred dollar bill. I was eight. Oh, I was eight. Okay, I was eight. Okay. And who else? Um, I also like to thank my grand, my grandma for oh, get you grateful for your grandma. Okay. Yeah, for buying for buying my other paintings. Like once, like once I bought my painting, bam, she bought it. Like once I made it. Nice. So let me ask you, uh, what are your favorite subjects? Math, art, and yeah, and that's like one of my, yeah, like those are like two favorite subjects, math and art. What about creative arts? Oh yeah, creative arts. Well, I don't really do creative arts, but I would. You paint. Yeah, but she said subject, like as in school. Yeah. Look creative at her. Arts. She's specific, because I asked her a specific question. I love it. Yeah, favorite subject. And so, Joya, what is your favorite book? What is your favorite book that you've read? My favorite book would probably be Dog Man. Dog Man, okay. And so what is the, so I have to ask you this as being nine year old, what is the funniest thing that you've ever done? Ooh, that's a tough question. <laughs> I've done a lot of things to name. The funny would, thing, you and Caitlin, what's the funniest thing you've ever done? Okay, I, I want to say this, but it's kind of mean. <laughs> so hopefully my dad's not watching. Uh, okay, so the funniest thing I've done is one time me and my mom were talking. Uh-oh. And then, and then I just... <laughs> I randomly said <laughs> my my dad's eyebrows are so big it's like a universe up in there <laughs> so what you do wax them or did you shave them no so my dad would never like I so like my dad's beard is like this oh wow, wow. and I was like I was like no dad you look you look ugly just let me cut it <laughs> uh. <laughs> And he was like, no, I like this beard. And then my mom was like, oh, yeah, I want to braid it. So so did you braid it? Did you cut it? What did you do to the beard? I wanted to cut it. And then I told my dad that once you're asleep, I'm going to cut it. But I never did. Ooh, I could imagine if he would have woke up, if he would have cut his beard, what would have happened? But the idea that you thought about probably cutting it. Uh, mm -hmm. Amazing. So let me ask you, um, when we look at people who have inspired us, who would you say the top three people have inspired you? I would say my mom. Of course. Um, Disney. People. So your the, mom. Um, the people who created Disney. People who have created Disney inspired you because I know you want to be a Disney uh, a Disney dancer, but family members. So three family members that have inspired you. Your mom is one, and who would be two other ones? Um, Caitlin. Your cousin Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and family members. And your grandma, because she's an educator, retired educator, that keeps you every other weekend. That is so inspiring. Oh, yeah. Positive. How you gonna forget your grandma? And what about moi, entrepreneur aunt here, okay? Yeah. 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 You have your own business because entrepreneurialism does run in the family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's one other person that I want to bring honor to, and that is your great-great-grandmother. So my grandmother, your great-grandmother, and it's beautiful because this is Black History Month, right? And we're celebrating history. And you have a grandmother that is a century old. 
And how many decades is in a century? Ten. Ten. Right. You have a grandmother that's 103. 102. Mama Flo is 102. And not many kids your age have a grandmother that old. So we just want to give homage right now. We just want to pause and give yeah. thanks to love to Mama Flo because she is 102. Because without yeah. her, wouldn't have been your granddad. And without your granddad, wouldn't have been your mom. And without your mom, it wouldn't have been you. So we just yeah, wait. when I figured out she was that old, I thought I thought oh she, she broke a record or something, and then I yeah. immediately yeah, I immediately searched up who was the oldest person in the world. But I think like the oldest person that lived like a hundred and twenty something. I thought it was one hundred and eight. Well, it's close enough, but she's in there, right? She's in there. Yeah, she's totally in there. So I wanted to ask you also, Miss Joelle, what are the, what do you think? Um, what is the thing that admires you most when you started your own business? And how did you, let's talk about that. How did you start that? I'm so proud of you. You have your own uh, art and show us one of the pieces that you have. Show us one of your art pieces. And this one. That, that, and does, what does it say on there? It says, R-I-B-H, Rich. Rich, that is lovely. Are you selling that art piece right there, Miss Joya? Yes, I am. How much you selling that for? Twenty-five. She's selling it for twenty-five, and I have an art piece right here that you personally made for me, and it, and it looks really good with my cool background. And this is something she made for me. I love it, Joelle. I am so proud of you. Where can people purchase your art pieces? On on the real world joy .com. The real world of joy .com. and I'm also gonna put that in the link. I so what was your inspiration by you drawing all these art pieces? I mean they I mean they look really good. Joelle, you even have your own Instagram channel. Yes. So what's your inspiration? Like that plump, that drawing right there. What made you decide to and is that your drawing in the back on the wall there too? No, it's my mom. That's your mom's. Wow, that is just amazing. So what's your inspiration behind your art? Uh, my mom. Your mom? And what makes you draw those kinds of circles and squares and boxes? What makes you draw or put together certain shapes on your art pieces? Katie. Hmm? Katie. Caitlin. Caitlin? No. She actually like created this design. I just put it in and I and I added the rip. I mean, and, that's I also, gorgeous. and I also added the diamonds. And you add in the diamonds because you like stuff glittery. I love it. I love it. So tell me something like on this art piece right here. What was your inspiration of drawing the the heart? I don't know. I just like hearts and there's like hearts. I love and it. I but all of your all of your drawings that you have, they're so specific especially the, the last pieces that you've had on Instagram. I think you just did another uh, whole session of different kind of art pieces. And were you selling some art on Valentine's Day in front of your yeah, uncle right. and Miss, in Lizzie's Cafe, right? Let's give a shout out to Lizzie's Cafe in Albany, California. So what type of pieces did you bring there? Um, I brought some swirl art. Mm -hmm. I brought some paintings like this. Mm -hmm. And I also brought this like one paint. I also bought some some Valentine's Day um, paintings out. And I also bought I brought this one painting of this of this person from Dragon Ball Z. From where? Dragon Ball Z. Oh, nice. So what has been, what's your lowest price point on your art and what's your highest price point thus far on your art? My lowest price point would probably, because I don't like really sell these anymore, but I used to sell some small paintings. Those small paintings would be like $5. Five dollars. So, Joel, Joel, look here. Joel, five dollars. And then, what is your most expensive? Let's say forty-five. 
So from $5 to $45. And mm-hmm. so has that been the highest that you've sold a piece thus far out of all your pieces? Yeah. And how, how has that made you feel selling an art piece for $45? Really good. Really good. Wow. I am so proud of you. When you look back at your work, how do you feel being an artist? And how do you feel that you are an official entrepreneur at the age of nine? I feel really good. So real quickly, let's talk about money. So when you get paid and you sell an art piece, what do you do with your profits? I invest them with stocks. I, I, um, oh. I, buy, I buy some more canvas and paint. Okay. I sometimes spend on food and then and then I also sometimes spend it on this game Roblox. Nice. So if there were other young people your age, what advice would you give them if they wanted to uh, be an inspired artist like yourself? What are two things that you would kind of recommend them or give them advice if they wanted to start a business like you? If they want to start a business like me, you always need to supply like tables, paint, canvases, and always a spot to sell. And the other advice is never trust scam calls because if you make all that money, (laughs) <laughs> by selling your artwork and you get a scam call and you lose all that money. So why would someone be scamming calling you, you think? To get money. To get money. Because they just don't want to take the time and effort to just make it. They just want to scam call you. Got it. Got it. And I didn't ask you, how long does it take you to, to make like a piece like this? How long does it take you to draw it? Like that it would probably take me about 10 minutes. Wow. Because, like, I have to, at at first, have to draw, like, the outline, like, for the heart. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is I draw, like, the black part inside the heart. And then I draw the golden background. If I see a messed up, I'll just, like, I'll just, like, paint it in. I just think that's beautiful. How many colors of paint do you have? Do you own in your collection? Um, about, like, six or seven six or seven no different kinds of color hues in your paint collection probably a hundred in your paint collection yeah and what's your favorite color when you are painting i would say probably black okay and so that's why you made a black heart this is beautiful it's one of my favorites Mm -hmm. i love it so i love to do the black outline so 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 joelle how have you felt having to be at home and not with your friends i just wanted to fast forward you know you're not with your friends we're in this COVID, you know this pandemic how have you been able to adapt to that um homeschool learning so amazing and i made one friend Mm -hmm. his name is his name is joe and um i and so we are in the same art class together and also I have my cousin okay. on my mom's side. Okay. His name is Keaton. And he was in art class. And yeah. So now my friend Joe and Kingston, now they're like best of buds, but they also but they also annoy each other. So what you're saying is that you've been able to adapt to homeschool learning. Pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and, and also, am I to understand that your mom also uh, is homeschooling you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and, and how's that going for you? Um, you like it? Really? Yeah, because at first, school was like, it felt like it felt like a, a day. Mm-hmm. It felt like we had like, let's see. It felt like we were in school for 18 hours and we only had like... <laughs> And so now, so now how long is your curriculum scheduled now with your mom homeschooling you? 
how many hours in a day would you like say? Three or four hours. Three or four hours. I'm sure you get a break and then you have to do your homework. Mm -hmm. I think that's just lovely. I think that is wonderful. So can we give your mom a round of applause for taking the time in the homeschool you every day? I just, I just think that is just fantastic to our mothers out there that are homeschooling our children. Um, so there are options to where our kids are in public school, right? The curriculum, Joelle, and then you have the opportunity to, to be homeschooled by your mom. So can we just uh, say hello to your mom? Is, is, your, is your mom your mom there? And give her some praise to the curriculum. Hey, hello, everybody. wow, I just love it. So let me ask you, um, Tony, how many hours do you put together your curriculum uh, every day with Joelle? And you have a couple of other children that you're homeschooling yes. your curriculum. How many hours? So, so I lesson plan about four hours a week. Okay. Okay. And per day, how many, how many hours are the kids online? Learn about three to four hours a day. That's nice. That's nice. And, and how have you found that they are adapting to that type of curriculum? They love it. They love it. And they're happier. It's more wow. one on one. Um, it's just, it's a better environment. So let me ask you, when this COVID lifts up, this pandemic and uh, kids are allowed to go back into the uh, district, uh, that is Joel's age. Would you recommend, I mean, what's your mindset on maybe having Joelle go back into the system? Or are you going to keep continuing to homeschool her? I will keep on until she wants me to. I think that's awesome, man. It really depends on what she wants When coronavirus is over. Oh, when the virus awesome. is over with. <laughs> you know, I, we're hearing so many more moms enjoying homeschooling their children. I like it. And so, so, so what is about homeschooling that you, that you enjoy that's working out for you now? We're at home, you're first at home. of all. So it's safer. You're in your, you know, own space, your own environment. And the cool um, thing is you don't have to drive to pick up your kids and then drive back home for no reason. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. I have more freedom. Mm -hmm. So we learn what we, you know, yeah, it was just more freedom. And the curriculum, is it based on Unified School District, uh, board? Um, on California, California Common Core. Nice. But I create, I create lessons. I do it. And your own. lessons are created uh, for what age range? Um, ages seven seven to about 12. I love it. So, yeah. so Tony, let me ask you, would you be willing and open to if there were parents out there that wanted you to add their children to your homeschooling curriculum at, at this moment? Are yeah, you, yeah, sure. I would, I would, mm -hmm. um, but I would keep it small. I would okay. keep it small. I would keep Very it at a, a maximum of about six kids. Wow, that it. just allows more personal time. Um, that allows me to help them um, and not feel so overwhelmed. Yeah, overwhelmed. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Because that's what happens in the class of 25 plus kids it's overwhelming it's a lot and thank you for mentioning that because when yeah. the district opens up uh richmond if i do west country school district opens up I'm, I'm wondering how are they going to accommodate uh kids and downsize the room I'm size for this COVID thing, you know, you, you have like what, 30 kids, 24 to 30 kids in one room. How are they going to, they're going to have to downsize that to at least 10 to 15. How, well, how, I don't, but I don't know how that is feasible. How, how would that even happen? How would, yeah, exactly. How, how? Exactly. How, that's the question. Yeah. How would that even happen? So my kudos to you, uh, Tony, that's Thank great. you. And, and, and for doing such an awesome job. If anyone Thank was you. interested in reaching out to you for uh, to join your homeschool or for additional tutoring, 
uh, where would they contact you? Rich City, Rich City Kids. Okay, your Rich City Kids um, dot com, right? Dot org dot org. Rich City Kids dot org. Yeah. All right. And, they could all right. find they could find a list of the workshops that we have plans coming up. We have, actually have um, a few coming up. Nice. Um, they can reach me through there, the website. I love it. I love it. And also, too, really quickly, Tony, I want to also just uh, bring you offer creative, is it creative writing and on your Facebook classes? Tell us a little bit of, uh, about that, of those courses that you offer now, the workshops. Creative writing workshops. Um, we are still starting a six week workshop beginning February the 26th. Mm -hmm. um, it's for kids eight through 12 and 13 through 17. And we okay. will meet every Friday. Look at kids that. will learn how to write songs, poems. They will learn um, about hip hop. They will learn about creative, writing and feeling free mm. when you write. I love it. I love it. You did your first workshop uh, under Rich City Kids, which is yes. your 5013C uh, organization, yes. which is wonderful. Yes. Kudos Thank for you. you. Thank you very much. And has uh, 5013C uh, is just amazing. And then Tony, yeah. real quick, you did one complimentary. And then after doing that workshop complimentary, you gained a lot of exposure and then you end up doing a paid workshop after that. Well, the paid workshop starts um, February the 26th. So we've done um, two, four, six, we've done six free workshops so far. Mm. Mm. Um, and huge success. We've had kids from Canada, uh, Florida, Seattle, um, all over the place, all over. I love it, Tony. Congratulations you. to your success. You. I am going to put that in the links because there may be some parents uh, outside of California that is watching that might be interested. Yeah. Kudos to Rich City Kids. And one last question, Tony, how does it feel to know that you have a young entrepreneur daughter sitting right here that she has her own business at the age of nine? <laughs> how's that how's it make you feel a lot of work that's all <laughs> a blessing a bad she whoa i'm sure it's sorry it. about that that's okay a blessing a blessing because she's so smart yeah. and creative and talented um however for me it's it's work and that's a lot okay of work. it's gonna pay off don't worry. She'll be making all this money that'll pay for her college education. And then you'd be like, that work paid off. So Joyelle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So Joyelle, let me ask you um, any last words that you would like to share um, before we close out the podcast. But before you share that, you're a singer too. And you also a writer. You sing, you're so talented. Wow, we just see you all over Instagram. What inspires you so much with your singing? And you can sing too, and you got a voice. So what inspires you? Where you get that singing from? YouTube videos. But you know what? You're such an actress. When you're singing, you are in a character. Drama it is just queen. so natural within you. Wow. That is just so creative. I'm so proud of you, Joelle. Any questions that you would like to ask me before we end our podcast? No. Okay. I'm thinking. All right. Any last minute words you would like to share? Um, What's your next? Yeah. What, oh, is, yeah. what is your what is your next? What is your next project that you would like to work on that you haven't completed yet? Um, so, I know, uh, um, my project is me and my mom and my cousin, Caitlin, we are going to be paying some chairs. Okay. And we're going to be selling them. Oh, you're going to paint some chairs. Do you think that you might go into furniture 
building or creating your own type of furniture? No, but my mom is definitely going to start doing that. <laughs> Joyo, it has been a pleasure. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time. Continue inspiring mm -hmm. that bright star that you are. And one last thing, what is the favorite URL that you would like to share uh, with people how they can see your lovely works? Is it your YouTube? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Uh, yeah, I'm going to check out my Instagram. And what is the Instagram handle again? The world. The real, the world joy. The world. No, remember, that's my other, that's my other. She has so many URLs. She can't remember. Real. <laughs> yeah, it's real world of joy. It is the real world of joy. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. This is Miss Joyelle Evans Nye and Kim Evans uh, with Inspired Conversations. Thank you very much for watching. It has been a very amazing day. Thank you, Joyelle. Bye. Never touch.